everyone. Welcome to our latest book trip after dark chat with New York Times bestselling author Carrie Ann Ryan. Welcome, Carrie Ann. It's great to have you here. Thanks for and, having us here. And Kitty Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we are here today to talk about her 1001 Dark Nights novella, Wicked Wolf. Um, this is the eighth book in her Redwood Pack novella, and we are dying to know what the characters are currently up to. So before we begin our questions, I want to remind everybody that we're giving away a mystery bag full of Carrie Ann's favorite things. So stop by Book Trib after the chat and please enter to win. Um, so Carrie, can you get us up to speed a little? I know this is <laughs> a lot to talk about, but up to speed on the Redwood Pack novella for anyone that might not know everything. Uh, the series? Yeah, or... just a little brief, a little brief <laughs> um, overview. So... Ow, she bites me. Okay, so the Redwood Pack series is a series about a pack of werewolves. And so it started off with seven Jameson siblings in which they were all werewolves or shifters, and they each found their mate. And the first seven books of the series, as well as the extra novellas, were all about um, them trying to defeat another pack. And Wicked Wolf starts a whole new... Um, arc in the series because I wanted it so that way anyone who was coming in could start with whatever they wanted and uh, not be really lost. And so it's set 15 years after the end of the Redwood Pack series and 15 years before the next set of books called the Talon Pack series. Cool. So what made you choose wolves for, for this series? Is there something that draws you to that type of, you know, paranormal creature? Or, um, you know, An Alpha's Pack, which is book one. Um, was my first real uh, book I had ever written other than just playbooks that I thought maybe I could be an author and um, I wanted to try something paranormal so I went with something that I felt like I knew and had seen and we had just gone to a wolf conservatory with my sister um, and I came home and wrote about them thanks to another author who said just try it and so it worked. <laughs> and awesome. Now, um, how did you get involved with the 1001 Dark Knight series? Um, I am very lucky to know Liz Berry, who is an amazing reader and amazing fangirl like I am of a lot of the authors in it. And she asked me to be part of it, and I jumped on it and tried to sound professional. And then she if I was okay when I said yes. And then I squealed and did a little dance, so she understood I was really happy about it. <laughs> so, yes. Awesome. So, um, have you read any of the other books in the Dark Knight series? Do you like you know, ever talk to any of the other authors? Any I've actually read them all. Awesome. <laughs> I read them all. <laughs> I'm lucky that I can read really fast, so I usually read a book a night. So I cool. went through and I made sure I was up to date on all of the author series and all of. So I was, um, I could just jump right in with it. A Thousand and One Dark Knight novella. So I've read them all. Um, and I can't wait to read the ones coming up this year. Cool. Um, now, do you have a favorite part of Wicked Wolf? This is a question from Mary. Um, probably my favorite part is Quinn, my hero, when he grovels. <laughs> he does something that's not very good. I mean, he was one of my harder heroes because he didn't want to be in a romantic relationship at all. And he right. had a good reason for it. And so um, he didn't want what was happening and something he didn't do something very well like really bad and he grovels and that was probably my favorite series i don't really want to tell you exactly what happens so you have to read right. <laughs> exactly <laughs> everybody <laughs> um uh <laughs> brady has a question um she says you interview other authors on your blog can you talk a little bit about how that got started and what it's like to be on the other side of an interview um i don't know if i really interview other authors I, I, <laughs> this person thinks you do apparently. <laughs> yeah, I hope that I think they may be confusing with someone else. I used to do interviews like three years ago, and that yeah, was just because I read so much. Um, and yeah, so you read a book like you can read really quickly. That's like a book a night. That's crazy. A book a night. That's I read um, in 2013. I read over a thousand books. I have a little <sighs> book addiction. <laughs> so. Wow. Um, but um, I usually put on my blog or on any Facebook or Twitter what books that I bought for the week. And so, like, today I bought 12 books. Sorry, husband. <laughs> so I bought 12 yeah, books. I do that, so I usually and then they sit there and they pile up. <laughs> oh, I That's go through awesome. them. <laughs> so 
so um what types of books do you like to read what are you reading now um i am reading oh what am i reading robin k's <laughs> new book which i think it's called a little on the wild side it's a contemporary romance <laughs> but um i read paranormal historical pretty much anything as long as there's a happy ending and no cheating i like the book <laughs> yeah it's always a plus <laughs> so um we were talking before we went live about some of your covers. What do you think is your favorite book cover that you've ever um, published? Do you have a favorite? I think um, Ink Inspired, which is actually the one behind me, <laughs> is nice. one of my favorites. And, or even Tattered Loyalties, which comes out mm -hmm. next week. Next week, sorry, next month, which is the start of the Talon Pack, the spinoff series. And my assistant, Charity Hendry, did the cover, and I gasped when I first saw it because it was perfect. Oh, she got it right. So. <laughs> awesome. Another thing that I noticed was the tattooed hunks on the cover. So I, I'm sure you must, you love the tattoos. So can you tell us a little bit about, like, the just, you know, just how do you choose the cover models? Like, do they, are you involved with that at all? Like, is it real tattoos on a real guy? Do you choose the tattoos? It depends on the, it depends. Um, Scott Carpenter does uh, my ink series, the, the Montgomery ink series. And um, usually we find the guy who has tattoos and as long as they're appropriate, <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> I'll write it into the book. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I don't want that. And so uh, we find models who are already tattooed and I write them into the book and I put a backstory to it. Or even I talk to the model and see what their backstory was. But um, like with, Sorry, there's a cat. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> <laughs> but with uh, uh, so, with some of them, like with Tempting Boundaries that came out in December, um, the model didn't have tattoos, and I was very specific on what tattoos he needed to have for his backstory. So cool. I have very talented cover artists who add them. Yeah, absolutely, very talented. Um, what TV shows are you currently watching? Is there anything that inspires you? Um, and actually, Lindsay wants to know if you could write for any TV show currently on air, what would it be and why? If I could write for any TV show, it'd probably be Once, in a, Once Upon a Time because mm. I love fairy tales and I can't yeah. stop watching anything with Hook in it because yeah. he's amazing. But, um, yeah. And I think that would be fun just to take the, the fairy tales and deconstruct them and then try to figure out what happens. But yeah. what I'm watching right now is actually going through another Netflix binge. And I just started Parks and Recreation, and I can't stop watching it. I'm in love with yep. Andy. So. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> um, Variety wants to know, who's your favorite character in Wicked Wolf and why? Probably Gina, the heroine. Mm -hmm. She um, surprised me because... She, when I started, when she showed up, it was in book two of the series. She was a toddler, I think. And she was just a side character that I wasn't planning on writing ever. And I even named her after a crit partner as a joke. And then um, as the series continued on, she became a little more important. And then in this book, she surprised me with how strong she was because she goes through hell and has to sacrifice a lot for other people, no matter what she is. I mean, she gives up everything, so, but, and she doesn't really cry about it either, so. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting how you start a character and then you don't really know how they're going to, you have an idea of them and then they totally surprise you. So, like, what is that process like? I just, I find it so interesting. Do you ever just write an entire description of them and then totally, like, cross it out and you have a new, a new idea? I'm a, he I'm a heavy plotter, so I usually go through and figure out who they are and then figure out the plot to figure, to see what would drive them or what would break them. Yeah. And uh, But sometimes they completely surprise me. The book that I just wrote, just finished edits on, Fierce Enchantment, which comes out in April, he, uh, I had no idea the characters were going to do what they did. And it actually <laughs> changed the end of the book. Same with Wicked wow. Wolf, actually. I changed um, the major plot of the book to what it is because how strong Gina is and how stubborn Quinn was. Hmm. That's amazing. Which I don't like usually do, which, yeah, 30 books in and I don't usually change my plots and then this oh. day. They take on their own life. Um, I had a question. So the, the stories kind of go, they're over a long time span, as you were saying earlier. So how long do the wolves live in your novels? Is it, you know, longer than a normal wolf? 
they um they're not called immortal because they can die but they most of my wolves are in their hundreds or two hundreds so oh. so they're long lived yeah awesome um now angela wants to know what prompted you to write romance in the first place and to put a paranormal spin on it um i love happy endings uh when i started to write romance i was teaching chemistry at a university and i wasn't very happy i loved chemistry but i wasn't happy with um just dealing with students and stuff i know i feel like a horrible person now but i just wasn't very happy with it because there weren't a lot of happy yeah. endings in a chemistry class and so i wanted to write romance because i wanted to for people to actually be happy and um paranormal i put paranormal a paranormal spin on it because i wanted to build my own world at first rather yeah. than having to live in a world that already existed. I write contemporary now as a different challenge to myself, but paranormal was more fun because I wanted to build my own rules and then have to follow those. That's awesome. Uh, do you ever find that you're like kind of building your own idea? Do you ever think like, this is ridiculous. How is this going to work? And then you kind of have to like bring it all together. I feel like when I read paranormal, I'm like, there's no way this can work. And then the author just kind of, they just put it together. I try and it's amazing. not to, um, I try not to be too, when I write paranormal, I forgot, I think it was Nalini Singh who wrote that when you write paranormal, you try to be as broad with your rules as possible. Yeah. So the more concise and the more constrictive you are in book one, you have to keep those rules through 15 books. Yeah. So um, she actually totally helped with the fact that um, no matter how big I get, as long as I don't um, break my own rules, I'm okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Julia has a question about your cats. <laughs> she says, what are your cats' names? Have either of them made it into your books in some shape or form? Um, OK, so the cat you saw, that was Miley Cyrus. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's Six. all in front of the camera. She's like, hey. She was named when Hannah Montana was out. It's a long story. <laughs> I wanted the annoying cat name. So that's that. Miley Cyrus. I have Maxie Jonas, who's her litter mate. <laughs> And then Amazing. we have Kane, who is a tabby, and he's two. I did not name him. He, so everyone thinks that he's named after a romance hero. He's actually named after a candy. Cool. <laughs> and then tonight, in about an hour, we're picking up cat number four. We're fostering, well, we're adopting him. And his name yeah. is Bingo. Oh. So, and he's an orange tabby. And they have not made it into my books. I actually don't, I think I have one or two dogs in my books but i don't have any real pets mostly because i've been writing a lot of paranormal and paranormal yeah. with pets just hasn't been working out <laughs> yeah oh i have a There's new the next idea <laughs> yeah. oh man um so what other paranormal beings have you written about um in the past can you tell us a little bit about that i've written almost everything um so in redwood pack in the talon pack world it's pretty much wolves against wolves. There are demons yep. and humans and witches. In the my Dante Circle world, there's everything. I wanted it to be because um, it's seven women get struck by lightning and they're all going to turn into a different paranormal creature. So I don't really have an overlap. It's so, like I just right. finished writing about a, um, a wizard and then what faith turns into. I don't want to spoil it, but. Um, <laughs> But I have, you know, angels and demons and brownies and stuff you buy and lots of things. And then in my Holiday Montana series, I wanted something a little lighter because my Redwood Pack series got a little dark. Sorry, guys, but it's good. Um, <laughs> and so it's about holiday paranormal. So I have like Cupid and there's leprechauns. Oh, that's cool. But there's, it's, they're not like little gold men, don't worry. But I wanted yeah. something a little funnier. <laughs> Um, Elise has a sizzling question here. She says, on a scale of one to super hot, how would you rate the raunchy scenes in your book? <laughs> Probably super hot. Yeah. Like, Maybe more <laughs> molten. <laughs> I don't really, molten I lot. started off, <laughs> woo! Um, they started off maybe an eight when I started writing and then I said, you know what? And I threw up my hands and I said, I'm going to have fun with it. So they're pretty much tens. But I like awesome. it. And my readers do, so they tell me. So, yeah. <laughs> Louisa wants to know, does your husband read your books, and what does he think of them? He's read a couple. 
in the Redwood pack, actually. He's my formatter, so he has to read some of them to oh, do the formatting. Interesting. But um, he, I don't really let him read a lot. He doesn't really read. To, he's a chemist as well, so unless it's a science oh. book, he doesn't read a lot. My mother reads me, though, so that's something. Cool. <laughs> Does she give you feedback, or is she kind of just like, huh? No, Sexy. she reads a lot. My <laughs> mother-in-law's actually um, sat next to me while I was writing a few of my books. So, mm -hmm. so, awesome. so they read. So, um, Marilyn wants to know, how did you come up with your character names? Is there, like, a process? Do you hear one, you know, maybe in a movie, or just, is there any, like, process for that, or just random? Usually I go to baby names and figure out something that I like. Um, in the case of Gina, it was after a quit partner as a joke that turned into a whole book, but it works. Um, I have a spreadsheet, if you know me, that you know I have like 15 dozen spreadsheets. <laughs> but uh, I have a spreadsheet of names, which are names that I've used and names that I want to look up later on. And so I try to pin them with what works with the character. Um, do you, oh, here's a better one. What's your favorite type of chocolate? <laughs> Skip the other one. Go to the chocolate. <laughs> um, I like, I love Reese's. I mean, I don't really, I'm not a huge chocolate fan. And Me I've either, had to give up right. chocolate because I started oh, no. working out more. Mm -hmm. I'm down 40 pounds or so, but it's, I, it's hard to even talk about chocolate. But um, I, I like know. I, I do love salted caramel chocolate, though, Jeez, so I that I will that. give up my diet for. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Lindsay has a question about um, just all the different success that you've had. Um, she says, your Redwood Pack series kind of picked up your success, and did you have any worries that moving on to the Dante Circle and Holiday Montana uh, series uh, wouldn't be as big of a seller, or do you not let that bother you? Um, I couldn't sleep scared, you know, th th thinking maybe I need to get my teaching certificate recertified and oh my god, everything's oh, going wow. to stress. Yeah. But those are wow. nightmares and it's fine. But then I think everything's going to be fine and it doesn't matter because I'm doing what I love. And my assistant who hopes, I think is listening to this right now, Charity, thank you for listening to me as I cry and vent. <laughs> but um, yeah. I don't, I, I love writing more than one series and I love alternating them. It keeps what I do a little pressure and so and I really want to tell those worlds so yes I'm going to stress but I think every author stresses even about the next book in the same series yeah. so um it it was a stress but now it's more of a okay then we can do this because I love yeah. my characters yeah. exactly um Marilyn wants to know a little bit more about Quinn Weston and where that character inspiration um kind of stemmed from um I wanted a bearded tattooed wolf because that's my I think right now and I wanted someone who had been through a lot and who didn't want to bridge the gap between two packs even if it was destiny and fate and all that stuff he hates and mm -hmm. I just really wanted a little a darker hero that um I, that he would um, start to break down the layers with yeah. Gina and by himself too and it didn't just take a woman to melt him it took himself as well mm -hmm. Now, Shelly wants to know how you keep all of your Redwood Pack series plots straight. Do you have, like, do you have a master binder or notes, or is it a spreadsheet? How do you kind of I have, I use Microsoft OneNote, so I have different books for each series, and then different tabs for each book, mm -hmm. and then I have spreadsheets and images and notes and series arcs and this wolf can change into this color and this is how long it takes to shift and this is this tattoo placement and so I have all of that which I keep but I usually actually remember most of it unless you ask me straight on and then I forget. <laughs> yeah wow that's a lot to remember though that's impressive. Um, now Kristen wants to know about shows that you watched growing up or maybe books were any of them paranormal or of supernatural nature were they an inspiration? I'm trying to think what I watched growing up. I've forgotten everything. Um, I know, it's hard to remember. I know, like what, what qualifies as growing up too? Um, I guess I used to watch like uh, uh, Nickelodeon After Dark 
what is that one that they would light the match and blow it out and they'd tell ghost stories and stuff? Are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of the dark? Yeah. So I used to watch things like that and I really liked the yeah. the paranormal aspect of it. So that ha huh, <laughs> I did watch some and but I do not watch scary movies anymore because my oh, imagination's really? too much and I can still see the girl from the rent, yeah, so like <gasps> like ooh. I know, I just scared myself. <laughs> Scary about that, I realized that she doesn't make any noise. She just crawls no. out. And then, or the noise Very that the scary. kid makes in the grudge. Now I've scared you all. No. I'm sorry. Kevin. I know. Nope. <laughs> Can't even think about it. I know. <laughs> it's terrifying. Um. So, will you be seeing Fifty Shades of Grey when it comes out this year? This is a, cr- a question by Kristen. Probably not, only because I don't <laughs> see movies unless yeah. they're Marvel or The Hobbit. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep. But no, I probably won't be, and um, I actually, I don't really watch romance movies, because I'd rather read about them. Yeah, I, know, I agree. agree. Um, <laughs> Shelly wants to know, have you ever written a story based off a dream that you've had? Um, Interesting. I wrote the holiday series based on me falling, almost falling asleep and trying to think of a holiday book to write in the Redwood Pack world, and the whole series came from that. And a few um, scenes have come from dreams, but not a whole book yet. We'll see. Hopefully soon. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Now, before we were talking about tattoos and stuff, and you have A Thousand One Dark Nights, can you show us? Look, look, it's awesome. Look at that. Fantastic. And can you tell us about um, some of just your interaction that you've had with readers? Like, what is that like? I'm sure that that's really rewarding and just great to talk to people and, you know, connect on social media. Um, I try to, I'm on social media every day. I'm a slight addict, yeah. but um, I just try to talk with readers and I try to, I mean, I'm a reader myself. I started off yeah. reading and that's how I got into this. And so um, I love going to conferences and I'm going to Coastal Magic in a couple weeks. I went to, when I went to Lorelai's Raw, uh, we, I got, let's see if I can do it. Ha, I got the camera right. I got this tattoo with five other readers, which is a book with awesome. paw prints. So Yay. I mean, I don't think of myself as a, I think of myself as an author, but when I also think of myself as a reader. So that's why I like to yeah, talk with everyone. Yeah, nice. mm-hmm. that's awesome. Um, so what has been the most challenging thing about being a writer and the best thing so far? The best thing is probably being able to tell my stories and people reading them. And the worst, the most challenging thing is telling my stories and people reading them. (laughs) Um, I love being able to write and be able to tell what's in my head. There's a lot in there. But um, it's a little challenging too to make sure what's in my head is what you guys are reading at the same time. And so, mm-hmm. and also making sure I balance myself yeah. because I tend to work a lot. I have 11 books out this year and I had 12 last year. So I work a little too hard sometimes. So I'm learning to balance myself. So what do you do when you're off time? When you do have off time, how do you kind of balance that? What do you like to do when you're not writing? I usually read. That's pretty much what I do. But my husband and I are trying to actually take this thing called a vacation this year. But, um, it's I've actually, those, yeah. I don't know if it's going to work out because, um, we bought a house in August and so mm-hmm. it's our first house. And so of course both sets of parents want to come visit. And so there's going to be a lot of traveling to us. And so I don't know if we're going to be able to take a vacation this year. So maybe next year, 2016. Yeah. Something to aspire to or a staycation. You never know. <laughs> that My husband relaxing, actually used too. that word yesterday because we were talking about a B and B. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate myself for saying that. That actually. <laughs> so did he, um, which is kind of awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Catalina has an interesting question that just came through. She says, "What trends do you see coming on strong in the paranormal genre that we might not be seeing right now?" I think we're right at the. Ooh, I have no idea. I'm horrible at sending trends. I write what I want usually. But um, um, I'd like to say that different shifters are becoming more now. And I like, I think more fantasy romance. I'm seeing a lot of, in, in my TBR list, I'm seeing a lot of like sword building barbarians and things in yeah. paranormal, which is really mm-hmm. exciting for me. But 
Um, but we'll see. I mean, I pretty much read the trends and read what I like and write what I like. So exactly. What is it about okay. shifters that you, the, you know, drew you to writing about them? What's like sexy about that? I think there's something really interesting about that type of. I like the character. fact that usually they're fighting between their two halves, or even if they're completely symbiotic with their other half, there's the other half they have to deal with. So yeah. they're going to growl more, or they have even a little more aggression, or they have to deal with the fact that their um, wolf side has picked someone that the human side hasn't, or even their bear side or dragon side or whatever. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's very interesting, the animalistic side. Um, is there any plans to do any more writing or anything in the works for, for A Thousand and One Dark Nights again? That's from Charity. I have an idea for what I'd like to do, and if 2016 works out, wink, Liz, <laughs> um, I kind of already know um, what I want to do with that um, within the Redwood Pack. So I actually have an idea of a sort of a plot and the characters and the title. So, but I don't really want to go into. <laughs> okay, wink back. She says wink back. Can't wait for 2016. Oh, so yes. yes. So 2016, there would be, there will be another Redwood Pack novella. So, and I already know who it's going to be about and everything. Meaning, I'm going to weave it in so you can guess who it is in the Talent Pack series that comes out this year. Awesome. Ha. Yay! <laughs> Catalina wants to know: Do you have a current celebrity crush? I'm in love with Chris Hemsworth and he's mine, and not, I'm not going to share. It. <laughs> I realize he's have married you... and has like three kids. But... <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Have you ever noticed that um, certain authors kind of base their their male covers off of? They look very similar to to actors. I've noticed that a couple times. Have you ever thought about doing that? Um, I that? usually. A lot of people get their inspiration from actors, and I usually try to get my inspiration from a stock photo, which is weird. And it's mostly because I want to be able to own the photo so I can use it for marketing and graphics. So um, I usually go through sites and figure out what works in my head and see someone. I'm like, can I see your story? And so right. I try not to pick from actors because I can't own their photo to use it later. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so. Um, can you tell us a little bit, this is a question from me, I was just curious, what first, like, brings your characters together in Wicked Wolf? What do you think is the initial attraction? Well, the first attraction is the first sentence. I mean, <laughs> they're completely attracted to each other, and it's most, um, their wolves are the things that brings, that brings them together at first, because their wolves have to want to mate, and um, they may think, like Quinn may be sexy, bearded, broody with tattoos, and Gina may be all curves and muscle and a witch with, she's half witch, half wolf. So she has all this power and all this strength. And mm -hmm. so that's another way that they eventually become attracted to each other. But the first thing is they're wolves, and so they have to fight that. Yeah. Um, Shelly says, I've been addicted to the Redwood Pack since the first book. Did you intend to make Wicked Wolf able to stand on its own, or did you want people to read the other books before this novella? Um, I, my goal was for peop people who had never read the series to be able to start right there. That's why it was 15 years in between the two big series, Redwood Pack and Talon Pack. So, um, any new readers, hello, and you can start Wicked Wolf without having to read anything else, but then I also wanted them to go back and read the Redwood Pack because I love that exactly. series. So, and there's also special little hidden things for those people who have read the Redwood Pack. So, mm -hmm. if you read the Redwood Pack and read with Red whew, Wicked Wolf, then there's special yeah. things in that book just for you. Oh, good to know, guys. Good to know. Um, now, one last question for you. Um, what would what type of advice would you give to someone who wants to start writing like paranormal romance? Um, the first thing I did was set out my world, and so I would go through and just free write, which is weird because I'm a plotter, but free write um, what your rules are and what you want to happen within the world, and then mm -hmm. just write. That's my advice to anyone. If you want to write, then write, and then everything else will come. The hard work and determination. You just have to have a book in order to 
Mm -hmm. Okay, in order to plan for this time. Right, an idea and then go from there. Awesome. Um, I just saw Rhonda Jones just, just hi, Rhonda. In touch. She said, I finally figured out how to get here. Oh, I want to say hi to her. Hi, Rhonda. <laughs> oh, Rhonda. <laughs> Does she have a question? I guess not. Glad you made it. <laughs> um, is there anything else you wanted to say about um, Wicked Wolf before we uh, close out? Well, Wicked Wolf, um, I loved writing it. I loved being part of A Thousand One Dark Nights, and I really hope you guys like it. I have my bearded, broody, tattooed hero and my yes. half witch, half wolf, curvy yet muscled, strong heroine, and they're kind of explosive, and it's going to be a lot of fun if you've read it. So, awesome. And I can't wait to see what happens in the rest of the series. Yeah, and guys, don't forget to stop by Book Trib after the chat and enter to win a mystery bag full of Carrie Ann's favorite things. Thank you so much for joining us. It was very Thanks fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Take care. Bye, kitties.